What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we are continuing our Universal Monster Review Series. Now we are on to Frankenstein from 1931, yes one of the great all time classics based on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein or based off Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This is just literally one of those films that is a staple, an absolute staple in the horror community and there's many, many reasons why and today we're going to talk about a whole host of those reasons and some of my favorite parts of the film and also highlight some other fabulous things about the people behind the movie. So let's get down to this. Roll it. <laughs> Frankenstein from 1931 is directed by James Whale. He's also responsible for directing The Bride of Frankenstein, and he also did The Invisible Man. So he's responsible for a lot of awesome universal classics. This film stars Boris Karloff, Mae Clark, Colin Clive, and Dwight Fry. So a really fantastic cast across the board. This is, like I said, one of those staples in the horror community. The storyline for this one is it follows Henry Frankenstein and his assistant Fritz as they go around town grave robbing. And their Henry Frankenstein's main goal is to create life. And what he does is he gets different body parts from the graves and from different bodies, and he wants to create, you know, a new being and create life. Ends up creating Frankenstein's monster, the most fabulous, one of the most creative designs that we've ever had in the horror world. And he has, eventually has to confront the monster. So this is, like I said, one of those all-time classics. This is based off Mary Shelley's Frankenstein book and I can totally tell you from my experience with this movie is that there's a reason why it's a classic. There are so many cool images in this one in terms of cinematography, haunting imagery, but to go along with that, we have some fantastic performances. Boris Karloff, Colin Clive, Dwight Fry, like literally all of the characters in this film give a great performance. This is a really good film to watch because it's an interesting story, it's captivating, and to go along with that, we have these actors and actresses that really elevate this film. But like I said, I want to talk about some of my favorite things in this movie, and definitely my favorite positive with this film is probably the imagery, the cinematography, the shots in here. There's some really cool scenes, especially when Frankenstein and Fritz are going around town grave robbing and stuff, where they go to cut the hang the guy that got hung, and they cut the hangman down. Like, oh my god, there's some really cool shots. The on-set designs and everything, I just really adore this film in terms of the way it looks, and it's creepy. This is one of those perfect black and white films to put on at like midnight or one in the morning and just enjoy the visuals. Another fantastic thing I love about this film is it blends science fiction with horror so we have a lot of good blending of genres and that's one of my favorite subgenres of horror is when you're able to take science fiction and horror like i.e. aliens or alien any of those movies predator those kind of movies the thing but then this is like said one of those early precursors one of the beginning films that really dived into science and creating life and involving that into horror and also the whole thing is that this is kind of like an lgbt plus you know community kind of pro film so that's what's really cool too about having the different body parts and stuff for frankenstein and you know the really that whole non-communication thing when frankenstein's monster comes to life and a lot of the scenes that we go through it's just it's really cool how frankenstein's monster is shunned by a society and the, the whole village and stuff and is mistaken basically because it's accidental one of the great scenes in here is an accident accidental death that happens in this movie of a little girl that is very horrifying so that scene is one of the most horrifying scenes to watch but it's, it's beautiful to watch because you're seeing Frankenstein's monster like interact with this little girl but then what happens because he doesn't understand that she can't swim like yeah there's a lot of cool imagery and a lot of cool subtext and story stuff so like I said there's so many reasons I'm kind of blabbing on because there are many many reasons like I said why this film is is iconic and because it started a lot of stuff in the genre of horror, science fiction, and creature features, this one, you know, really put the bar very, very high. This is also a tragedy and that's what I like too is that this, this film is a tragic story. It ends up like, you know, where he has to confront the monster, the people are burning down the building and like all the stuff that happens when we get to that eventual climax in the third act, like it just builds and builds. And like I said, this story, this film is just really iconic and I, I do adore this one and love this one. 
And I can't wait to start diving into some of the other ones because there's a lot of sequels. This film also spawned a lot of sequels. We had The Bride of Frankenstein. We had Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, House of Frankenstein. So there's a ton of sequels that were spawned after this movie. So like I said, you can tell this was one of those films that is going to always stand the test of time. We also have to talk about the creature design and the performance by Boris Karloff, which I think is just really out of this world and ahead of its time for real like Boris Karloff is one of those actors that was able to you know just do emo emotive stuff with his face the way he moved and stuff eventual sequels to this Frankenstein's character would end up learning how to speak you could kind of take that with a grain of salt or leave that that depends on how you like that but I think Boris Karloff does a really good job when he's able to just not use words and he's able to use his emotions and his face and body language to convey what the character is feeling a lot of that goes into the mummy as well but boris karloff gets a little bit more dialogue in that film of course because he's playing you know uh, emotep but yeah the frankenstein monster really iconic the design like I said and all that stuff because that's one of those ones that sticks to this day like people even if you're not a horror fan or you don't watch these movies people recognize and know the Frankenstein monster design. In terms of negatives with this film, I really don't have any negatives with this film. There's not really nothing that I dislike about this film. I really, like, this is one of those films that, to me, it's just a perfect horror experience it's a really fun ride and like not fun ride but it's a really enjoyable watch for me even though it's a tragic story and the way it ends and stuff like that but like i said in terms of the enjoyment factor i get from watching it like i said it's always there and this is one of those films that's a staple for the halloween time definitely a must watch for sure and in terms of where this film is going to land in the tiers when we're talking about it we have the a tier the b tier c tier and f tier and to describe them again a tier is like the most iconic the films that i think deserve deserve the praise that they get and I enjoy them as well B tier are ones that I enjoy and I can see all the stuff that they did and laid the foundations and groundwork for future films but there are some negatives I have with the films C tier are those ones that I kind of have a little bit mediocre enjoyment with but I probably wouldn't return to them that often and I don't really see why they get so much praise and then F tier are the ones that I flat out just don't like that I think are bad films or I think don't deserve the praise they get so that's that's the different tier rankings and Frankenstein from 1931 is going to land right up in there with that A tier right up there with Creature from the Black Lagoon. Like I said, those films, these two films right there, iconic films and I think deserve the praise they get and I can understand why they affect and why so many people, you know, go back to them and watch them and pull from those films because like I said, they really did lay down some really cool foundations and beginnings for a lot of future horror films that would come after them. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this video. This is just my thoughts on 1931's Frankenstein. Please let me know down below in the comment section what are your thoughts so we can discuss. Also, like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I drop a video. But most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.